Are you afraid of the end of the world? I remember some years back when I was teaching a lay ministry and deacon formation class in western South Dakota, and we were going over the words of the Our Father. We got to the words, Thy kingdom come, and said that one meaning of that phrase is that we're praying for the end of this world and the second coming when Jesus will establish his kingdom once and for all. One member of the class said she was going to quit praying the Our Father. Hello, I'm Father James Kabicki. And this time of year, the church gives us readings about the end of the world and the second coming of Jesus. They can be pretty scary. Like our first reading from Daniel today with the words, It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. I mean, when you think of all the distress the world has seen in its history, and you think that the end of the world will be even worse, you have to be afraid, don't you? And then we have the gospel with Jesus saying, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Again, a pretty scary image. Do we really want to pray for the kingdom of God to come if it means all that? Well, if this life is the only life, then these thoughts about the end of the world can be pretty scary. But it isn't the only life. And one thing only really matters, that God loves us so much that in the words of St. Paul to the Romans chapter 8, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now. That's a thought to keep in mind when we read about the end of the world.